Welcome to our exploration of the 1948 movie Arch of Triumph. This film has lots of interesting, surprising, and sad facts that you should know about, so stick around for some fascinating insights. In this old movie, you'll find a story that grabs your attention with its lasting qualities, making it an important part of movie history for many years. As you watch, think about what makes this movie stay popular over time and become a favorite for many. Among the different characters, which one will you like the most? From the mysterious to the brave, there's a character for everyone to cheer for. Tell us who your favorite character is and why they made a big impression on you. Now, we want to hear from you. What's your favorite memory or personal experience connected to this movie? Share your stories and memories below. We're excited to hear from you. So get comfortable and get ready to enjoy and be moved by the interesting story of Arch of Triumph. There's a lot to discover and we're happy to explore it together. Arch of Triumph is a romantic drama set in World War II. It's about Dr. Ravik, a guy living in Paris who's in danger of being caught because he doesn't have the right papers. He meets Jean, a woman trying to kill herself, and they fall in love despite the war. The movie stars Charles Boye as Ravik and Ingrid Bergman as Jean. There's also Charles Lawton playing a mean Nazi guy and Louis Calhoun as a Russian ex-soldier turned doorman. Some people say the movie is slow and a bit boring even though the actors are great. The black and white cinematography adds to the mood, but the film still feels like it's missing something. The movie is based on a book by Erich Maria Remarque and was later made into a TV show in 1985. If you're a fan of Ingrid Bergman or Charles Boye, you might like it. In 1941, MGM initially cast Ingrid Bergman in the role of Beatrix Emery in Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde alongside Lana Turner as Ivy Peterson. Bergman, recognizing the greater challenge in portraying Ivy, successfully persuaded the studio to let her switch roles with Turner. During the production of Arch of Triumph, efforts were made to secure Robert Ryan from RKO for the role of Ravik. However, Arco's demands proved impossible to meet and the casting plans had to be adjusted accordingly. Although Bergman delivered a compelling performance as the sultry Ilsa in Arch of Triumph, her nomination for Best Actress did not come from this role, but rather for her part in For Whom the Bell Tolls. Notably, she lost the award to her close friend Jennifer Jones for the Song of Bernadette. Jones, celebrating her 25th birthday, humbly apologized to Bergman, who graciously responded, acknowledging the superiority of Jones' portrayal. In summary, Bergman's journey with Arch of Triumph involved a strategic role swap, casting challenges, and an Academy Award nomination for a different film. These aspects contribute to the nuanced narrative of Bergman's career during that time. In the 1948 film Arch of Triumph, Ruth Warwick played a significant role. Her character Phoebe was later remembered in an episode of All My Children in January 2005 following her husband's death. Phoebe's funeral, which aired in May 2005, included memorable flashbacks of Warwick's performances, bringing closure to her storyline. The movie was supposed to feature Charles Lawton as Roman Emperor Tiberius Claudius Caesar Augustus Germanicus in a film adaptation of I, Claudius from 1937. However, production was stopped due to an accident involving Lawton's co-star Merle Obron, leading to the project's cancellation and reimbursement of costs to the producer. Additionally, Maria's character in For Whom the Bell Tolls from 1943 demanded a lot from the actress. When Ernest Hemingway suggested cutting her hair for the role, she firmly refused, showing her dedication by saying she would do anything for the part. She rehearsed scenes tirelessly, often late into the night, to perfect her performance. The film stands as a tribute to the dedication and talent of its cast, including Ruth Warwick and other notable actors. Their commitment to their roles and the memorable moments they created continue to be celebrated by audiences. Arch of Triumph, a movie released in 1948, revolves around the character Dr. Ravik. He struggles with grief and despair, taking a fatal dose of barbiturates shortly after his wife's passing, just before his 79th birthday. The movie navigates the challenges of the time, including the strict production code, which prohibited open discussion of sensitive topics like abortion. In one scene, Dr. Ravik faces the tragic consequence of a botched abortion indirectly referenced due to censorship regulations. During the depicted era of 1938, abortions were illegal in France. Beyond its narrative, the movie provides a glimpse into the personal interest of one of its fans who happened to adore the Beatles. Arch of Triumph, directed by Henry King, features an interesting anecdote about Marie Osborne. 
King, initially unable to find a boy actor, cast Osborne due to her Dutch bob haircut, which made her resemble a boy. Anthony Quinn commented on Ingrid Bergman's dominating presence, expressing that falling in love with her would have been a tragedy due to her dominant personality. Interestingly, Charles Lawton, who portrayed Jonathan Reynolds Sr. in It Started With Eve, later played Captain Kidd in subsequent films. These connections add layers to the narrative and highlight the intertwined nature of Hollywood's history. In 1941, Charles Boyer established the French Research Foundation, a library aiding motion picture pre-production work. He relocated it to West Hollywood during World War II and utilized it for his film Arch of Triumph. This 1948 movie benefited from research on French history's costumes, buildings, and furnishings. The property, previously owned by Boyer's former estate, is now on sale for $3 million. Situated in Choiseul, it comprises five buildings on 18.5 acres, 30 minutes from Paris, with 10 bedrooms, eight bathrooms, a greenhouse, a 55-foot pool, and a small barn, it's a luxurious estate. Various actresses were considered for the role of Ilsa Lund in Casablanca, including Olivia de Havilland, Rita Hayworth, Hedy Lamarr, Margaret Lockwood, Mitchell Morgan, and Anne Sheridan. In the movie Arch of Triumph, a 1948 film, we see a captivating story brought to life by an actress who had once visited the 1939 New York's World Fair. She didn't just go as a visitor, but to really soak in the wonder of the RCA exhibit. Little did she know that this visit would change her life and lead her into the world of cinema. The actress, known for her role as Hannah Cord in Peyton Place, found herself cast in Arch of Triumph through a stroke of luck. It wasn't a usual audition, but a lucky connection through a friend who knew the casting director at 20th Century Fox. This twist of fate not only got her a role in the film, but also marked the start of a career that would make a big impact on the movie industry. What makes her journey stand out is the unintended role she played in changing the Hollywood studio contract system. At that time, actors were often tied down by strict contracts with studios, but she was one of the first to challenge this. Her success and influence helped change how things worked in the industry, giving actors more freedom. In Hollywood history, she's remembered as a pioneer who navigated the challenges of the silver screen and left a lasting legacy. Arch of Triumph isn't just a movie. It's a reminder of the power of cinema and the amazing journey of the actress who starred in it. This journey ended up reshaping how Hollywood worked, all thanks to some unexpected twists and turns. And that's the story, all connected to the threads of history. Ingrid Bergman's journey to stardom began with a stroke of luck and talent. In a chance encounter, a Swedish couple praised a film of hers to their son, an elevator operator. Six months later, she found herself en route to Hollywood, crediting her entire career to that elevator boy. Studio records for the movie noted the construction of a staggering 112 major sets. Ingrid Bergman, like a select group of actresses, achieved the triple crown of acting, winning an Oscar, Emmy, and Tony. She joins a prestigious list including Helen Hayes, Audrey Hepburn, and Helen Mirren. Her remarkable talent and luck, combined with her triple crown achievement, solidify her place in cinematic history. 